many of the trails in the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains are at a very high elevation at or above timberline. I contracted with the Rock Creek Pack Station to take me into this high country. My little group consisted of a pack mule, a Wrangler guide, Tom, his horse, and my horse, Tammy. Tom, my guide, is very experienced with pack animals and the back country of the Sierras. Now typically, we would stop for lunch at some beautiful open spot. The sights up there are just marvelous. When we were done relaxing after lunch, Tom would repack the mule and we'd prepare for the afternoon's ride. Sometimes I would hike ahead of him in order to film the group of three going through a trail. We rode the animals up the mountains. We would come down the mountains. I marveled at how sure-footed the horses and mules were. We saw very many waterfalls. And we saw and passed through shores of many beautiful lakes. And in August, it's spring at the high elevations and the wildflowers are in bloom. Now, in order to ease our camping burden, we spent each night in the campsite of a much larger group of riders. These folks had contracted with the same pack station and they had their own cook and pack animals. So every evening, we camped with this larger group in order to take advantage of their food, their cooking, and ding, ding. their pack mules. Oh, well, I don't want sauce on it. Their pack animals had brought in all the conveniences of home. Yeah. Tables, chairs, pots, pans, some great food. And their pack animals had also brought in my tent. So there's the tent. This is the rain fly. After dinner, people gathered around the campfire and talked. I think Coach is my oldest boy. And that night, we were treated to a full moon in the clear mountain air. In the morning, there was a lot of activity in the camp. Riders were preparing their sandwiches to eat for lunch later in the day. The cook was preparing food for the hungry group's breakfast. Everyone looked rested after a night under the stars, sleeping in their sleeping bags. The facilities were behind this blue canvas wall. If the toilet paper was hanging on the outside, that meant the facilities were available. Tom's dog was very well behaved. Tom and another senior wrangler talked about some special places they thought they might take me today. I don't like to find little pieces of eggshell in my scrambled eggs either. Tom's 
Tom relaxed, waiting for his breakfast after the guests had had theirs. The mules had been rounded up and were waiting patiently to be packed. Tom and I left the big group and went off on our own day's adventure. There are so many of these gorgeous valleys in the upper Sierras. We usually stop for lunch in one of these picturesque areas with mountains towering around us. Even though we were in the wilderness, I don't remember having any particular worries about bears or other large animals. The horses enjoyed the lunch stops too. I like the way Tom prevented the horse from eating there. Tom got the stock ready, then he walked them over to the river for water. And then we were off for our afternoon's ride. When we got back to camp in the evening, the mules were enjoying a dust bath. <laughs> you have some good scenery. That's my horse, Tammy, with the bell. She's a mare and well-liked by all the stock. So the stock followed her wherever she went. So the wranglers put a bell on her. All they had to do was listen for the bell. The next morning, the wranglers prepared the stock for travel. The big group was going to move on down the trail for the next night's campsite. There's a lot of knowledge, skill, and work involved in preparing for a ride. By late morning, the pack train was underway, carrying all the parts of the camp food, cooking equipment, chairs, tents, and so forth. I carried only two cameras with me while I rode. Both of them were in holsters tied to the saddle. The primary consideration in my riding was safety. Some parts of the trail were so potentially dangerous that we got off and led the stock.
It's a good sign when your horse or mule wants to drink. In the course of our day's travel, we crossed boundaries between national forests, state forests, and other designated areas, each with different requirements and restrictions. We had lunch by a very lovely stream and in the shade of trees. A short time later, we came up to a small waterfall. The motion of the water over the rocks always intrigues me. Flowers were in bloom. When I needed some special camera equipment, we'd stop and dig out the equipment from the pack mule. Most of our camping gear, tents, sleeping bags, ETC, were carried from camp to camp in the main big pack train. Sometimes we just stop and sit and enjoy the magnificent views. The next morning, there was a lot of activity with the stock as the animals had to be packed. It was another day that the main camp's location would be moved. It's important to have the pack sacks weigh about the same amount on each side of the pack animal. The packers are good at judging what is enough and what is too much. Here's my horse, Tammy, with her bell. She's getting some grass before the long day's ride. When you break camp in the Sierras, you spend a lot of time cleaning up after yourself. There's not supposed to be the trace of the fact that someone had camped there the night before. All the manure is gathered up and dumped in a hole and then covered and tamped down. Then it's out into this beautiful country and the great weather. The main group of riders was out on the trail and I was enjoying the sights, the flowers in the meadow, the vistas, the valleys, 
the streams and the mountains. The pack train was making its way slowly down the rocky trail. So this is how I was able to take my camera gear high into the back country to do photography. As I rode along, I thought about the first explorers from Europe in this area. They probably used horses and pack animals too. I've hiked these trails, but it was so much easier when I could ride a horse rather than walk and carry everything that I needed on my own back. <laughs> 